Today I'm going to show you how to create a solar graph and tell you how to make extremely long exposures with an old medium format camera like this. And I'm going to open my light sensitive box. It's a box that I only open once every few years. And I want you to see what's inside. I made. Welcome to my studio. Today I have something special to show you. I was digging through a box of old photo supplies looking for accessories for an old digital camera and I came across these two boxes. Inside these two boxes are photo experiments from many years ago and as you can see from the label the, the boxes do not open and that's because inside there is light sensitive photos. So I only open these boxes once every few years and usually I do it alone, but today I wanted to share share the experience with you. But before I open these, it requires a little bit of explanation. You may not have heard of the term solar graph before. Essentially, it's a, a very long exposure, and instead of using film, you use photo paper. So if you have photo paper, if you've worked in a dark room, it comes in a light-sensitive container. Of course, you don't want to open this outside of the dark room because it would expose the paper to light and ruin it. If you're to leave a piece of photo paper out for 24 hours, you'd come back and it would have turned brown or black. What that shows is that there's a color change in that photo paper that happens without chemicals. That's the concept behind these solar graphs. By putting the paper in the camera and taking a long exposure, I'm talking hours or days months or even even a year. I'll show you a photograph that took a year to process. You take advantage of that slow transformation of the photo paper. All right, let's open this light sensitive box and see what we got. This might be the most interesting one in the entire box. This photo took, I think about a year to develop. You can see a tree in the foreground and you can see houses on the horizon and in the sky are these streaks those streaks are actually the sun as the sun was going through the sky you can see in here it must have been a cloudy day because the sun would appear for a few hours disappear the dots was when it came out other days it was sunny all day long until a point here and then the sun went behind the clouds as the months went past of course the sun moves in the sky so you can see the path that the sun took over several months. This paper is already turning brown. That's what I was talking about. These are temporary images. The longer I leave this exposed to the light, the darker this paper is going to become until it is completely destroyed. If I were to process this like normal photo paper, put it into the chemicals, it would instantly go dark and I'd lose the image. So the only way to capture this image is to scan it before it goes brown. And a lot of these experiments were failures, <laughs> so they, some will be better than others. Here again, you can see the, the path that the sun took. This one was taken in Loveland. There's a gazebo here. I can't remember this one, but I could see a car. There's some trees in here, but it's getting really hard. You can see the streak of the sun in that one, but not much else. When when the light is bouncing around in the camera, because you have the, the aperture open, you get some of these lines that I think those happen because the light is just bouncing around inside the camera. Here's another example. I cannot I can't really explain why the sunlight bounced around the camera in that way. You can see some trees here, the sun. And I don't really understand why this one got these little drips almost. Because right? there was no, there's no reason that should have been wet. So I, I don't quite understand what happened there. Another example of that light bouncing around in the camera to create that odd halo. Not much left of this one, but you can see a tree in there. And maybe a couple points of the sun. The 
This is a pretty nice one because I was by the lake and you can see the the lake and a single sun spot. So that probably took the sunset right here and the sun was in the sky about here. You know, that's probably a three hour exposure. When you're setting up the camera like this, you kind of got to predict where the sun's going to be. Otherwise you could have a three hour exposure and completely miss the sun. This one was in my backyard. I could see my neighbor's house there and the fence. Another one at the lake, the sun setting over there. I got the lake and in the foreground is a dock and the path to the dock. And here's another good example of the, the sun going behind the clouds to create a pattern in the sky. All right, so I'm gonna put those away and I'm, I'll open this box again sometime in the future. One thing I forgot to mention is, and it's it's kind of hard to believe, this process actually creates color photographs. Even though you're using black and white photo paper, it's able to pick up color somehow. Don't ask me how, how it does that, but you can see from some of these photos, it actually is getting some color beyond just black and white imagery. That's part of why the solograph process is so interesting. I think there's a lot of potential to this process that hasn't been fully explored. Okay, so you might be wondering how to create one of these on your own. I've used an old medium format camera, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it gives me enough room in the back for a big piece of photo paper. And then the other reason is this is a relatively cheap camera, so I can leave it unattended for many hours and not be afraid that somebody's gonna steal it. If somebody was to steal it, it would be a relatively low loss. I put a piece of photo paper where the film would go with the light sensitive part facing the lens. And then I rig it so that the shutter would be open. Uh, I forget how I did that, probably a piece of tape over the, the shutter. And then I just leave it for many hours pointed in a direction that I know the sun's gonna pass. Once I've got that exposed, take the photo paper out, scan it. I scan it as soon as it comes out of the camera because it's been exposed to the light as little as possible. I get the best, the best image I can, and then I'm done. That's the process of creating a solar graph. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look inside my secret box. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like it, share it, follow me on Instagram, and stay tuned for my next video. Thanks for watching. See you later.